Welcome to Milkshake Monday, episode 27. Tonight I titled it, When the Armor Don't Fit. And I know for those who are into grammar and English, you want me to make it the perfect way that I'm supposed to say, but I want to say it like that, when the armor don't fit. And tonight we're going to have liberties to talk about a lot of things that are happening with David. Many people know David as the man after God's own heart. That's what the Lord says. And I'm going to give you an example. When Oprah has her TV show on OWN called The Master's Class, many people will see the celebrities and the artists and all those people who have made it, who are, I guess, in the entertainment world, they are the stars. And we all look at those people and we're thinking how great they are. But a lot of times when you spend that hour in between the commercials coming and going and the little things that they're saying, you'll see that their story has a long, a long path where many of them struggled. Many of them were homeless or they were, they didn't get the acceptance the first time they had to be rejected. They didn't make money. They were just at the point of almost quitting before they had that opportunity and that open door where they succeeded. Well, if you look at the story of David, everyone sees the end point. David's the man after God's own heart. And they know about the story of Goliath, how he had the five smooth stones and it hid into the forehead of Goliath through the grace and the favor of the Lord and the power of God. But I want you to take a step back because tonight we're going to talk about a little, a lot about chapter 17 of 1 Samuel. But I'm also going to set the stage of what happened that many of us just gloss over because we don't know a lot about the scriptures and we don't take the time. But I want to give you an example. Imagine, and I do a lot of imaginations because what's going on now, people don't want to read in the scriptures. So I have to kind of get you in to at least listen. Think about this. You have an opportunity. Most people know who Warren Buffett is. He's a billionaire. He's a gazillionaire. Imagine that Warren Buffett had a few moments and you met him just on the street. You just met him. And he said, I'm going to write a few pages for you to just let you know how I actually came upon the knowledge to make these billions of dollars that I have. And I'm going to scribble them down and I'm going to give them to you. Or imagine that Michael Jackson before his death, he said, I want to tell you a little bit about the musical genius that I have. And I'm going to write a few things about what I found and what I understand and what I know. And I want you to understand. Or Oprah Winfrey, she's going to tell you some things about how she became this mogul. Doesn't matter who it is, but somebody that has great knowledge. Now, would you find that if they wrote a few pages to you and they handed them off to you, would you kind of put them on the table and forget about them? And you, you say, well, I don't, I don't have time. Oh, well, their handwriting's too bad. Oh, it's going to be boring. Well, think about the creator of the rivers and the oceans and the seas and, and people's bodies that have all of this chemistry and all this biological things that we can't even understand. People would be spending years and years trying to figure out the things that this creator who's created trees and animals and live stock that's in the actual fields and the sea, all this stuff. Well, imagine if he said, I'm gonna write a book to you guys and I'm gonna give you some explanation about what I did and what I thought and who I am. And you put that, that book on the table. You never looked, looked at it. That would be as crazy as crazy could be. But that's what this Bible is. It's a book about who God is, who his son is, who the Holy Spirit is, and the things that you need to know to live your life. And even it has all these sections about your enemy and how he's going to beat the crap out of you if you don't know what he's going to do. But you're so smart. If Warren Buffett gave you something, you don't have time to listen or read. Or if Michael Jackson had given you something before he died, you don't have time to read. Well, here the Lord is giving you something and you don't have time. Well, tonight, thank you for taking the time. Because tonight is going to tell you some things about the man after God's own heart that I don't think many of us take the time to learn. Now, as any movie, you see the, be you see the beginning of the movie and it kind of sets the stage. And then it does this flashback. So we're going to have some flashbacks tonight out of 1 Samuel uh, chapter 17. So I'm going to tell you where the part of it is where it says the armor doesn't don't fit, okay? So 
look at what you're going to go. You're going to go to Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 17. And most of the teaching that I put on there was uh, verses 32 through 40. But look what it says in verse 38. So you can see where the arm didn't fit. It says here, so Saul clothed David with his armor, his armor, operative word, and he put on, put a bronze helmet on his head. He also clothed them with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor. That's Saul's, remember Saul's sword and his armor. And he tried to walk for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these for I have not tested them. So David took them off. If you get nothing else out of what I'm going to talk about, you have to understand that David had had some opportunities to be with God. And God had taken him through many opportunities where he was there to protect David and to protect him while he was in the wild, keeping the sheep, because he was a sheep. He was a person that was a shepherd. But when it came to this battle, Saul said, oh, I know what I got to do with this kid, this youth guy. I've got to go and put my stuff on him. But David had the presence of mind and spirit to know that you can't put others' clothes and armor on you because God has fitted you exactly for the armor that he wants you to have. But in this case, what we find in our houses of worship and even in a lot of households that we may come by is that we have people trying to put on other people's clothing on themselves and it doesn't fit. And just like David said, I can't walk. You can't walk your walk of faith trying to do it like your grandmother did it. Trying to do it like your daddy did it. Trying to do it like the pastor is doing it or the pastor's wife is doing it. You have to walk your walk with Christ like it's your own because it is your own. Because you're going to test and you're going to have opportunities where God is going to grow you up. But I got to go back. I got to do a flashback. Because I want you to understand what has happened to the point that we're here in chapter 38. Because if you don't have an appreciation for it, you'll lose what he's saying when he said it hasn't been tested. That armor that Saul is trying to put on that don't fit hasn't been tested. But I want you to see some things. Remember in chapter 16 of 1 Samuel, you had Samuel coming and looking at all of Jesse's son. Now Jesse is David's daddy. And Jesse has had eight sons. And the order of the first three is Eliab, which is the firstborn out of eight sons. He's the oldest. And then you see the Abinadab, and then you're going to see Shema. Well, the reason why I tell you that is because when you get to chapter 17, there's a battle going on between the Philistines and the nation of Israel. And Saul is the king. Imagine one mountain having the Philistines and the other mountain have the nation of Israel. And in between that valley, that's where they have their battle array, their, their lines of forces. Well, Goliath, big as he is, if you want to read about the size of Goliath, go to the beginning of, of 1 Samuel 17. You see how they describe him. My husband said that he has the most descriptions of anybody in you, if you see a Philistine there. But imagine... That there is Goliath, and every day for 40 days and 40 nights, he's yelling obscenities to that army saying, bring your best man and let him fight me. And if, if he wins, we'll serve him as Philistines. But if he doesn't, y'all going to belong to us, basically. And Saul and all of his army are frightened. Okay, David's daddy Knows he's got three of his oldest sons there at the battle. He sends his youngest son, David, go get some food. Go get some grain, get some cheeses. Go get some food and take it to your brothers and see how they're doing it and report back to me. All right. David goes. He checks on his brothers. All is okay. He gives the food to the keeper. And then he gets to his big brother. Now, big brother in verse 28 of 17 says, now Eliab, now David started to ask questions, as young people do. They ask questions, and he wants to say, you know, what's going on? He hears some talking about what Goliath is saying. He sees how the men are all scared. And then he hears some men saying, you know, if somebody were to take Goliath out, I bet you the king is going to give him all this riches, and he's going to give him his daughter. And that, that guy's going to do pretty well for himself. So David hears that. But then his oldest brother sees him talking to the men. 
Now Eliab's older brother heard when he spoke to the men and Eliab's anger was aroused. And it says it was aroused against David. And he said, why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. But wait a minute. What you have to understand is Eliab anger was not just because David was talking to the men. In chapter 16, some time ago, Samuel rejected Eliab. He not only rejected Eliab, he rejected all seven brothers until he got to David. And then they saw, older brother saw the anointing of God on that little brother. He got some issues in the family. So David had to go through it. And look, you could tell something was going on because David comes back and says, after Eliab yelled at him, David said in verse 29, and David said, what have I done now? Because there had been some other stuff been said. What have I done now? You know how somebody talks to you like they always pick it on you. But Eliab, that old history was still festering in Eliab. So you had that going on with his little brother. Well, anyway, the people just ignored whatever was going on with Big Brother, and they decided to go tell Saul what David had been saying. Because David basically said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? Then he turned from him, his bro big brother, he turned from his big brother, and he turned from him toward another and said the same thing. And these people answered him as the first ones did. Now, when the words which David spoke were heard, they were reported them to Saul and he sent for him. Then David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with the Philistine. Now here's something I want you all who have had rejections. Those of you have, who have been told you can't do something. I want you to see what happens here with Saul and David's interchange. But it says here, verse 33, and Saul said to David, you're not able you're not able to go against this, this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth. You're a young guy. You're a young guy. You don't know what you're asking for. No, you can't do it. And talking about th this Philistine Goliath, and he is a man of war from his youth. But this is what some of you all who have been told, no, you can't do it. You can't go. You can't reach your destiny. You have to come back here and say, but David said to Saul, your servant... And here's he going to tell him how God and him have been together and how God has been fighting his battles. And he's trusting God. But look at what he says here. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock. Before I go forward, y'all know that in the jungle, a lion and a bear I've never really seen the bears in the jungle, but let's say bears and lions are not anything that any of us would want to see when it comes to being out tending sheep and those big prey animals come against you. But what happened, he's explaining that I've had some very big threats against me, but God, but God took care of them. With me, he was able to take care of it. And it said here, that that lion or that bear, they took the lamb out of the flock. Now, those of you who know anything about sheep, a lamb is young. And I wanted to tell, when I talked to my husband about the teaching tonight, he and I were talking about how Luke 15 talks about if you lose a lamb or you lose a sheep, you're going to go find them. In our churches right now, a lot of our lambs, our young people, are missing. The lion and the bear have stolen them out there. We've let them sleep away on Sunday morning. We've let them go party away on Sunday morning. We've got them so that they say they don't care. They don't want to go. But we have to be like that, that Luke 15, go searching after them. And this is what David did. David said in verse 35, I went after it and struck it because he took that lamb and delivered the lamb from its mouth. Satan has some of our youth in his mouth, trying to destroy him. And it says, and when it arose against me, which Satan will try to do, I caught it by its beard. I caught it by its beard and struck it and killed it. 
And some of us have to go into warfare with Satan in the name of Jesus, through the blood of Jesus, through that armor of God that Reverend Watts is teaching us on Sundays. We have to go. And David realized that. And he had been in battle, but he wasn't there by himself. He was with the Lord. The favor of God was about David. So here he is telling, telling Saul, who's just told him, you can't do this. You're too young. This guy has been battling since his youth. And David comes back to tell him about the bear and about the lion. But then you see what he says, verse 36. Your servant has killed both a lion and a bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. David realized that the offense that was coming against the army was not just an offense against them. Goliath was saying that his gods could be the God of Israel. And that was not so. It says here, moreover, David says, the Lord who delivered me from the paw, I love that, the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, y'all know them, they have claws. He will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Now, this is where the story about it don't fit starts. He already gave that history. But you all have to go back and read for yourself. It said, that's when Saul offered, said, okay, David, I'm gonna let you go. But I gotta give you all my stuff. Because Saul is the king and he's afraid. And he didn't go down. And you have to understand, Saul had lost the anointing of the Holy Spirit on him when God anointed David because Saul was disobedience. That's why God said obedience is better than sacrifice. So here it is, Saul had just given David all of his armor. And David said, no, no, it's not been tested. But look what happens. In verse, you go to verse 39. He said, I cannot walk with these for I have not tested them. So David took them off. And some of us have to start taking off things that don't belong to us. Just like Adam and Eve, they tried to put on fig leaves to hide. And God said, no, take that stuff off. I got skins of animals, coats of animals I put you on. Some things that we have put on, behaviors that are not of God, we need to take that off. Attitudes that are not of God, we need to take that off. We need to take things off that are not of the Lord and not for the, the proclaiming of the Lord. Just like David took off that armor that was not his. So he says then... He took his staff, that's David's staff, and he, and he got in his staff in his hand and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag, that's his bag, in a pouch which he had had and his sling which was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. Now you all have seen the whole story. Goliath looks at him as though, who are you? Am I a dog? Why, why are you here, kid? Uh, is this a joke, my candy camera? Is this a joke? Let me just feed your body to the birds, because you're nobody. Just like Saul was concerned that he was a youth and we got to discount him. That's the same thing that the Philistine. But the Philistine didn't know that David served the living God. And David believed in God. And David wanted to serve God. And look what it says in verse 45. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. Now you know Philistine Goliath looked at him like, I don't really believe you. But David didn't care what Goliath believed. He knew and believed and trusted in the Almighty God. And some of us that are in warfare and battles in our households, with our children, with our husbands, with our wives, with our jobs, with circumstances of life, we have to start trusting in the Almighty God and say to some of those demons in our lives and those situations in our lives that this day that you will be delivered in the hand of the Lord and the Lord is going to fight my battles. Now you see what happens? It says here, verse, I'm going to go down to verse 47. You know what he did with the five, five smooth stones. It said verse 47. Then all this assembly, this is what David says after he said, I'm going to kill you. And then he comes back and says, then all this assembly, which is all these people in battle, to include Saul, then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword 
and spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. That's telling you when you are discouraged, when you don't have belief in yourself, don't believe in yourself, believe in God. Don't think yourself so small. Believe in the almighty God, the big God. Don't look at the bank account. Don't look at the kids, how they're behaving. Don't look at the, the spouse, how they're behaving. Don't look at the pink slip from the job. Don't look at all the discouraging things. Look at the Lord and let him fight your battle. Let him go before you. Let his favor go before you. His grace, his mercy. David is not trying to share with you in the scriptures here that he's perfect. People ask me, and somebody asked me on Sunday, Sister Helm, have you always been this and this? Did you marry Reverend Helm? Was he a preacher? I want you to understand, don't look at us. We're sinners. I'm a sinner saved by grace. Any preacher in the pulpit is a sinner saved by grace. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but we have to trust that it's the Lord that fights our battles. Look what it says here after David, verse 51. Therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword, drew it out of his sheath, and killed him and cut off his head with it. That stone hit him in the one place that he wasn't protected. The Holy Spirit's power in that thing hit his forehead with that stone, and David was able to exactly what he said this day you will be delivered into my hand i will strike you and take your head from you and that's exactly what was happening in verse 51 cut his head off and if you look at the uh, verse 52 now the men of israel and judah arose and shouted shouted because when god delivers you just like that luke 15 we talked about you losing that lamb losing that sheep when we rejoice when God delivers. We rejoice when God saves one soul. In heaven, there's a shout, there's a party. And for those of you who are in a situation where the armor don't fit, it's because if you are not with the Lord, if you're not having him clothed on you, his mercy, his truth, his salvation, his, his love, his endurance to share with you that he's fighting your battle, you're finding that things just don't fit in your life. You're just confused. You're broken. You're bothered. You can't sleep. You can't eat. You're just, your mind is so messed up. It's because you're trying to fight the battle on your own. You're trying to wear the salvation armor and it's not yours. Jesus is the Savior, not you. You can't put on something that only he can carry. He carried himself to the cross for all of us. And he didn't want us to try to work and make enough money to take care of everything. He didn't want us to kill ourselves trying to make the kids do right, make the husband and the wife do right. He said, you got to pray. You got to pray to me. You got to pray to the Father in my name. But these things come with you spending time with me, reading the word of God. Everybody won't understand the word of God. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. That's why you need to go to study the Bible at the Bible study. It's going to mean sacrifice for you to take time to come and learn of him. But it's important to learn. Today, I think it, I started thinking about, you're going to say, what a strange topic to think about. But Pete Davidson, that's the guy from Saturday Night Live, the comedian. And he said that he really didn't have a will to live. He didn't have a will to really stay on this earth. And it was a call to me for help. The man is suicidal. And we have it as a news story. It's like, oh, people are telling him to kill himself. Oh, he broke up with his girlfriend. Oh, you're trivializing the pain of a man, a young man, who is at such desperation in his life that he doesn't have a purpose that he wants to live. And you think, oh, that's just some, that's some movie guy or that's some TV guy or some comic. I don't have to worry about that. Our children, our youth, our husbands and our wives, people who are teachers, people who are in the ministry, there are people who are considering taking their lives because they don't see the value of life. It's not just Pete Davidson. It could be the neighbor. It could be that grandkid that we heard about from sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so. We have got to share with them that we are real people, 
with real sins that God has covered through the blood. We can't be so uppity and high mighty. We have to share with them. Yes, David was a man after God's own heart, but David had failures. But when he had failures, he came to God and he repented. And he went to God and asked for forgiveness and asked him to, to wash him. As this, you know, Psalm 51 is about creating me a clean heart, God. Renew a right spirit in me. Ret restore the joy of my salvation. We have to start talking about Jesus more. Now, can you go to church? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? We have to realize that God is here and he can fight our battles but we have to open our mouth and start sharing with people the love of christ the importance of studying the word of god because there are things about here just in this one chapter you can sing a song don't give up don't let people tell you you can't do something you can go to the next he's been with you while the devourer comes to take things from you there's so much here don't be something that you're not. Don't wear something that you're not in this world when God wants you to meet your destiny, reach the very potential that he's created you to be. So I wanted to share with you, when the armor don't fit, take it off and ask God, clothe me with your righteousness. Let me repent. Let me be a part of your family, God. That's what's important for you to recognize that Jesus Christ loved you so much, so much that he came and gave his life. So for you that spend your hours and hours on Facebook, reach out to Pete Davidson and tell him, God loves you, Pete. Don't kill yourself. Take the time to do something to encourage somebody. We don't want him lost to, to Satan to make him think that nobody loves him. Somebody loves you, and he is Jesus Christ, and he died for you, and he died for me, and he died for all of us so that we can have life eternal. I thank you for joining in. I pray that you will have heard something that will minister to your heart and that you'll share about who Jesus Christ is to everyone you meet. God bless you, and have a great week.